Well, in this week's Cardiology Countdown, we'll talk about anticoagulation and valves, the use of renal denervation for AFib prevention, an interesting combination, and the use of anticoagulation in uh, patients with acute MI who also develop atrial fibrillation. So first up is an analysis from the STS database uh, looking at patients who underwent uh, bioprosthetic aortic valve implantation with or without bypass surgery in about half the patients and looked at what anticoagulant and antithrombotic regimen patients were discharged on and their three-month outcomes. Now, overall outcomes were good, a 3% mortality and about a 1% risk of bleeding and 1% risk of embolic events. And they compared the combination patients um, where aspirin plus warfarin was used in about a quarter of the patients to the half of the patients who were discharged on aspirin only. Uh, and found that the combination of aspirin plus warfarin was associated with a lower risk of death uh, by about 20% lower risk and about half the risk of embolic events, but a two and a half fold increase in major bleeding. And so a trade-off there. Interestingly, about 12% uh, of patients were discharged on just warfarin, and compared to aspirin alone, outcomes were nearly identical with similar mortality and bleeding and embolic uh, event rates. And so this calls out the variability of what patients are discharged on and uh, calls us, I think, to pay greater attention into the relative balance of uh, benefit risk of dual antithrombotic therapy in higher risk patients uh, versus monotherapy. So next up is an interesting small randomized trial in patients with atrial fibrillation referred uh, for um, uh, ablation, of the pulmonary vein isolation, where they're randomized to pulmonary vein isolation or that plus renal um, artery denervation as a way to reduce uh, blood pressure. This was a cohort of 27 patients with resistant hypertension and atrial fibrillation, and half uh, were randomized to the combination of renal denervation or not. They found a very large decrease, about 25-point systolic and 10-point diastolic reduction in blood pressure with the addition of renal uh, artery denervation. And that uh, also produced a, a greater persistence of sinus rhythm um, in, uh, at one year, where 69% of these high-risk patients uh, were still in sinus rhythm one year later, as compared with just 29% uh, in those who got um, pulmonary vein isolation alone. So it's a pilot study, but I think one that focuses even more attention on the driving cause of AFib in the patients with resistant hypertension and uh, introduces a, a novel approach to their management. And the topic this week is um, a study from the Action Registry Get With The Guidelines uh, database that looked at patients who present with acute MI uh, and the 7% of those who also had atrial fibrillation. And so two things happening at once. There's about 5,000 patients overall. So interestingly, uh, patients in this cohort, uh, fewer than half of them were sent out on anticoagulation with warfarin. Um, there was a gradient of the percentage of patients discharged on warfarin according to the CHADS-2 risk score, uh, so that that ranged from 28% of those with CHADS risk score 0, 34% um, of those CHADS-2 uh, risk score 1, and 43% uh, of those who were CHADS-2 risk score 2 or higher. Um, thus, uh, some gradient of risk, but still a lot of under-treatment with respect to anticoagulation. About 15% of patients were treated with triple antithrombotic therapy of aspirin, um, a P2Y12 inhibitor, and warfarin. But it calls attention again to the use of what is the optimal use of anticoagulation in these high-risk patients uh, that have uh, indications for both antiplatelet therapy and anticoagulation. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.